All right, so um, today we're going to process uh, a portion of NGC 7000 um, that I recently acquired uh, the S2 data that I didn't have for it. So let's go ahead and take a look at our our stacks over here. This is going to be our hydrogen alpha data there, and that's applying an auto stretch to it. Um, this is our S2 data, and you can see quite a difference in it. And then here is the O3 data. And so we're going to combine these three images in the Hubble palette. So we'll go to process, uh, channel combination. And I'm just going to reset this. And we're going to do S2, HA, and O3. All right, and we're going to hit apply global. And that is going to generate our Hubble palette image. And we'll go ahead and just minimize those. And now we're going to go ahead and apply an auto stretch. Now if you link the channels, it applies an even stretch across the image. And you can see that it's just a big old green mess. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let PixInsight figure out what it thinks um, that data would look like if it's stretched unevenly uh, to the best of its capabilities. And we get a good starting point here. Um, we still have a little bit of a, a red cast and some a magenta star. So, um, but overall, it's, it's a good start here. So I will go back to my screen transfer function. We like that uh, stretch and we are going to apply it here so drag it to your histogram transformation and reset it there and now hit apply and for purposes here we'll just label this SHO and that way we can look at SHO over here and see kind of where it has stretched things here now, before I move any further in manipulating this image, um, this image seems to be a very nice, smooth, uh, clean consistency. Um, and so I'm going to extract a luminance layer from this image. And then I will just minimize it and keep it here for later on. Now, what I will do here is now from this image extract so if you don't have the uh, color mask script just go ahead and download it and add it in there that way you can have it um, but from this before I manipulate anything I'm gonna do a green mask um, just add about three layers to smoothen out the the mask and let it um, generate a couple masks here for you Alright, so this is going to be our green mask. And then we're going to do the same color mask for magenta, cyan, and yellow. So just do the one, two, three. And I'm going to pause this here uh, alrighty so let's go ahead and resume back so I did the I've done the green mask the cyan mask the magenta mask and then the yellow mask um, and you can see how it's picking up different portions of that nebula um, for you to be able to adjust the colors there um, as you as you please now um, if you kind of look closely in here, you'll see that there is a little bit of, of chromatic noise um, on here. And so uh, before I, I do any kind of stretching here, what I will do is um, apply uh, our image here, the luminance, and apply a LRGB combination uh, using the SHO 
luminance layer and go ahead and hit the chromatic noise uh, uh, chromatic noise reduction there um, and it's you're gonna leave it at you know 50 50 there um, but just go ahead and apply it and that way we can kind of clean the chromatic noise that's uh, in this image before we start stretching it uh, too much there Okay, so if you look at the image there and we go backwards, we can see, um, you know, it does eliminate some of that magenta color out of those stars, um, particularly the fainter, fainter stars, uh, because it thinks that uh, those fainter stars are part of the chromatic noise. But, you know, just on the overall image, um, you know we are eliminating a lot of that chromatic noise um, in this image by using that um, and that's something that you can do before or after and some images um, it works to do it at the end some images it just works to do at the beginning and um, from the processing that I did before on this image um, it seemed to be working better initially there all right, so one of the first things we'll do here is the magenta mask. We want to get rid of those magenta uh, tones on there, so go ahead and apply the mask and just hit the show mask uh, off. That way you can see what you're doing. And we are going to go ahead and open the curves. Now, the magenta we want to turn into a more of a blue color. So if you pop that red up here, you can see how that magenta really starts to come into play. So let's go ahead and decrease it so we get a little bit more blue. Um, but we want to preserve the, the the lightness on there. So what I will tend to do is you know, pop a little bit of a, of a RGB stretch there so that we just maintain the color there. And that might be just a little bit too much. So again, just find the happy medium there where you turn it off and on. And let's go ahead and apply that. All right. And we'll go to our one of our big magenta stars there. And you can see that we've actually turned it from purple magenta to a nicer blue there and even here in this region we're going from a purple magenta to a nicer blue there um, sometimes you'll get a a little bit of a green hint tone here and um, what you can do is um, just apply this here just so that you can go ahead and see it there um, but if you were to apply a curve stretch here, um, you can see a little bit of a, a greenish hint or tone. Um, I mean, overall, this image has great signal from, from all three filters there. So we naturally just get an easy image to work with. But um, if that wasn't as easy, um, we'd have to work more on these color masks. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and take the cyan there and I'm going to just kind of bump up that blue and that's actually RGB sorry I'm going to take the blue and just kind of increase that blue and decrease a little bit of that red so that we don't get that magenta kind of look and just play around with the curves, you know. Um, you can add or decrease. I'm going to just leave it where it actually was there. And turn things off and on and see what that does to your image. Maybe that's just a little bit too much. Okay. Now 
the green here and apply it there and see if we need to adjust anything you know the, the more green you add there you can decrease a little bit of the green to get rid of that um, you can play a little bit with the luminance luminosity there to just basically tone change the tone from green to a more golden overall kind of look there and then the yellow um, let's go ahead and see what the yellow does there um, this is just going to be in, in luminosity and again this is mainly to alter the the physical co the physical colors of this uh, nebula I'm not using much of it. I mean, you can use this to kind of stretch things here, um, but I'm not going to be using that in this fashion. Um, mainly because it, it tends to make things blotchy and you, you lose a lot of the detail on there. And so the yellow really doesn't doesn't change much there so I'm not even gonna apply yellow to this image there so let's go back um, and actually use our SHO the, the luminosity layer there um, and let's go ahead and with the RGB just apply a stretch to it here again this is where we're starting at and this is where we apply the stretch here and you can do s curves non s curves whatever you like um, and I'm actually going to go backwards and I like that that greenish yellowish uh, hint that it had there um, so I'm actually not even gonna uh, uh, going to use that and again every image is, is different um, but these are the three main uh, the four main masks that I use um, again sometimes you'll get an image that has great color from the start sometimes there's some that don't have a lot of color variation uh, from the start that you have to really kind of work with so um, let's go ahead and apply the luminance on there and let's go ahead and give it a little bit of a stretch there and I will do this main stretch and apply it to brighten things up then let's go ahead and look at our histogram here and mask we're gonna disable the mask there I'm gonna see if I can look at here I'm looking at where I'm still not clipping any uh, any pixels and there I started to clip some pixels but and that just kind of brings a another level to it I'm just gonna decrease it a tiny bit there And I'm going to put these peaks right in this between these two first bars there. Um, and again, that kind of just darkens the image, but um, let's go ahead and enable the mask one more time. And go ahead and do a stretch here. And again, this mass stretch is protecting our dark areas um, and really giving a nice stretch to our real light um, 
luminous areas there. And again, off and on, and you can see how it really gives this top edge there a nice glow. Um, so let's go ahead and apply that. And look at our image. You know, so again, we have a, a real nice clean image, not a lot of chromatic noise, um, no magenta stars, but we actually have a nice variation of uh, just yellow, white, and, and, and blue stars that make things look uh, a lot more natural um, and um, gives it just a good kind of color balance and tone to it there. Um, Let's look at our mask here and disable that and let's look at our histogram where we're at there. Um, and again you can kind of bring that back and forth wherever you like but maybe I'll just tone it down just a little bit so that they come to this peak area here. Um, but overall I mean this is a very pleasing image that I, I I I tend to shoot for. I like the blues uh, and I like the kind of yellow gold glow that fades into a deeper red um, in my nebulas. So this color palette um, is something I tend to, to, to kind of shoot for and so I would consider this image uh, just kind of finished. Um, if there's any cosmetic little uh, defects that are in my image I'll go and, and put those in Photoshop to uh, kind of get rid of them but there really isn't much uh, going on here um, so I hope you found uh, this tutorial a little bit uh, easier um, and um, or, or not not easier but uh, you found things to, to, to apply to your images here and uh, hopefully that will make it easier for you to process your uh, astrophotos